Welcome to the 12 years of Skyrim 2023 Ultimate Graphics mod list tutorial. In this video, we're going to do a couple of things. First of all, of course, I'm going to show you how to install the Wabbajack plus the uh, couple of manual mods we're going to, uh, going to need. But also I'm going to show you at the end how you can add your mods on top of it if you have some more mods you would like to see for yourself. Also, this video has now uh, chapters. So if, an example, if you don't want to watch this intro and you want to start right away, click on the appropriate points in the video timeline to start right away to the point where you would like to start with. So what is new in this 2023 guide? Well, the thing why this is actually needed is because Bethesda um, decides to sometimes release very weird minor updates, which doesn't really add something to the game. But what it will do is actually break a modded Skyrim Special Edition slash Anniversary Edition. And the problem is if you would install an older Wabajack uh, version, it will not work anymore. So it's almost needed for me every year to create a newer updated version of this Wabajack all-in-one auto installer mod list. This year it's probably going to be different since theoretically this should work forever for everyone. It doesn't really depend if... Bethesda will ever release any future updates. So that's the first thing I would say, which has been a great improvement, a permanent working version of the um, of this tutorial plus all the steps which belong to it. Another um, new thing is that I drastically cleaned up my Nexus mod page. Um, it became quite a mess with all the workarounds because yeah, of the minor Bethesda upgrades. So. With that, I would say it's become a lot simpler. It are just like 12 steps or something. And I'm going to explain them all in this video. And like I said earlier, at the end, I'm also going to um, explain how you can relatively easy categorize your mods to install mods later on top of this mod list. If you would like to add more gameplay mods, an example, or weapons, armors, that kind of stuff. It can be relatively easy done. Uh, so I'm going to explain to you to that as well. And as always, like I said earlier, you can follow the chapters in this YouTube uh, video to have easier access to things. But yeah, um, I would like not to uh, to go on very long on all the introductions and stuff. I would say let's start with the tutorial. All right, so let's start. The first thing you want to do is go to the Nexus mod page. So the one you will find um, in the video description as well if you didn't uh, encounter this video on the Nexus mod page. If we scroll down, we will come to the installation instructions. So as you can see, if you're familiar with my older instructions, uh, this is pretty much it. So I try to um, cut it a little bit uh, down all the instructions to have a more detailed, shorter, compact overview of what we need to do. First thing we want to do is install a new, fresh, unmodded version of Skyrim Special Edition slash Anniversary Edition. Before I'm constantly going to say Skyrim Special Edition Anniversary Edition, I'm just going to say Special Edition. The Anniversary Edition is just Skyrim Special Edition uh, with some extra content. So uh, from now on, I will only address Skyrim Special Edition, but it will work for both Anniversary Edition and Special Edition. So to install a fresh version of Skyrim Special Edition, um, by the way, if you have never modded your Skyrim Special Edition, you can skip this, this is fine. If you have modded your Skyrim Special Edition, delete all the mods from a mod, if you're using a mod manager like Nexus Mod Manager or Vortex, because it will definitely interfere with our mod list. So delete those installers. Um, then what you want to do is go to Steam. You want to right click on uh, your Skyrim Special Edition manage and install the game then you want to go um, delete the files from your is it from your main game folder which was in your steam uh, library steam apps comments Skyrim special edition uh, delete er ever all remaining files in here because if there are still some modded files remaining here they could interfere with skyrim special edition and also you want to delete the stuff from your My Documents, My Games, uh, Skyrim Special Edition as well. Uh, be careful if you're going to delete save games. If you're not using a Steam version, I'm not sure if uh, GOG, an example, will automatically back up the save games. So be careful about that. But from there, that is how you should properly clean your Skyrim Special Edition. Then you can just reinstall it, uh, Skyrim Special Edition. 
Start it at least once. If you have the anniversary edition, you can then download all the DLC if you like. It doesn't matter for this mod list. It will work with either just the plain old special edition or the full anniversary edition with all the add-ons. So keep that in mind, it will work with both versions. Once you have installed again Skyrim special edition, anniversary edition, um, you can start the Skyrim launcher if, and um, start the game at least once. This is important, so it will generate the necessary ini files. Once you have started the game just once, uh, you can close it and then you can continue with the tutorial. Then it is time for the Wabajack, so the all-in-one auto installer for my mod list. First you want to have the program itself of course, the Wabajack program itself. You can download it here if you follow this link. So you can click on download and uh, preferably I would suggest you install everything on the same SSD or HDD where you have your Skyrim also installed, so your Skyrim Special Edition. Um, don't install it in the Skyrim Special Edition game folder, however. Just install it completely somewhere else. An example, I have installed it in, you know, my second SSD and I named it Wobbajack App and I did put everything in here. So that's something you can do, but that's up to you. Um, so yeah, do that. Uh, first, download the program itself and install it in a folder uh, different than your Skyrim Special Edition game folder. Once you've done that, we can actually download my Wabajack mod list. So how to get there is either go scroll up to files and download it there, or you can follow the direct link to my files section on my Nexus mod page, and then download here this Wabajack mod list. So what a lot of you guys did wrong is directly try to import or run this in your Wabajack. Uh, that's not going to work because very simply, this file has been uh, compressed into a RAR file. So um, first of all, I would suggest you're going to create a folder manual mods for all these loose files we're going to download and place all those files we're going to download from now on in here. So the first one, so the file that we did now download is this one. So what you want to do is extract this file and then we will find these three files. So this is the mod list, the most important thing we're going to run from this tutorial. It will include 95, maybe 98% of all the mods and this is what we want. What you want to do is just very simply double click the mod list and then the Wabajack application should start. Now my both my pages will open because I set them as readme pages, that's, that's relatively normal. And you will see my mod list. So, um, what you want to do is uh, for a modless installation location, select a folder, preferably again on the same SSD as your Skyrim Special Edition. In theory, it's not needed per se, but it works the best if it's on the same SSD or HDD if you're using an old HDD. What I, what I have currently is a folder just Wabajack install packs because I'm also using it for Fallout 4 and Skyrim VR. If you want to install multiple Wabajacks, you can do that as well. And I did uh, create a folder Skyrim Special Edition 2023 Wabajack to have everything um, yeah, installed in there. So an example, I already have everything installed, so that's why you saw all the files. But just, you know, create a folder somewhere on the same SSD, not in your Skyrim Special Edition game folder. That's important. So just, you know, create a folder somewhere and then the downloads folder should automatically uh, be set as well. Then click on this big play button and then you're good to go. It will download all the required mods, which is absolutely amazing. One thing you definitely want a Nexus premium account. So the reason for that is then you will have all the downloads being done automatically and do you have very good download speed? An example, I have a 300 or what is it, 400 Mbit download speed line nowadays. And the entire mod list just takes me about 40 minutes, maybe 30 minutes. Um, and yeah, so that's relatively fast and it doesn't take hours anymore. Um, if the file, if the complete package has been extracted, keep in mind it will take about 160 plus gigabytes. So you want to have something like 200 gigabytes free on your SSD. So during this installation, it's very much likely or possible that the installation will fail during a point. Don't worry, that's relatively normal. The reason for that is 
Sometimes, you know, because there's such a big list of mods, you will have a timeout on the Nexus server. And for that, it will say at a point pr probably that it will fill. Don't worry, you can just select the back button and just start it again because it will uh, it will continue where it left off and you know it will uh, it, it has already cached all the downloaded mods so the only thing it's going to do is to continue downloading the remaining mods so you might have to do this a couple of times until you will see uh, completed uh, and the wabajack another thing which could work is reboot your pc if it fails and then wait 10 minutes or something and try it again but eventually you will have the completed button but keep in mind it's very much possible that your wabajack might fail a couple of times in between usually because of timeouts to the many 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 nexus mods it, it can have a timeout uh, to a specific mod an example once the Wabajack finally finishes, you should see something like this. Let's open it up. So you should have all these files. What we are really interested in is this file, modorganizer.exe. So to have quick access to it, create a shortcut to your desktop to it, because uh, like I said, we're going to need it a lot. Then what you also would like to have is a shortcut to your Skyrim special edition uh, main game folder. So that is your Steam library, Steam apps, common Skyrim special edition. All right. So let's see what we need to do next. Uh, we now need to set our Skyrim special edition to this version. 1.6.353.0. Why? Because this Wabajack mod list has been specifically created for this version. And to make sure this will work forever, it doesn't matter how many versions Bethesda is going to release in the future, to specifically have this version, I can guarantee it's going to work. So we want to have this version of Skyrim Special Edition and we want to have a specific version later of Skyrim Script Extender. If you're going to do that, everything should be fine from now on and you should not be, have, uh, should not be bothered anymore in the future by any minor Bethesda updates. So how to set this version? Well, we just use the unofficial Skyrim Special Edition Downgrader tool. Go to Files. If you go into Page and download uh, one of these many files. How to determine which one you need is to um, determine which current Skyrim Special Edition version you have. And how to do that is relatively easy. You just go to the Skyrim Special Edition game folder, right click on Skyrim SE.exe, select Properties on the file, Go to details and then here you will probably see something newer than this version. But this is the version we eventually want. So to give you a little bit of an example, um, uh, right now the latest version is something like 1.6.640. But again, check that with the file properties and details. And an example, if you will have if you have this version, well we'd want to we want to downgrade in this case to version this one. Um, in that case, it's relatively simple. You just select the file 1.6.640 to 1.6.353.0. So yeah, that sounds a little bit confusing, but we want to have this specific version in order to uh, have the to can to let the Wabajig uh, modless work. So I did, did download this because I had version 1.6.640, but we want this version 1.6.250. An example, if you have a different version, um, select that one, but it has to go to version 1.6.350. Important. Once you've done that, you can uh, go to that file, so manual mods, um, and then you can extract the file, and it should all be good, either as administrator or like that. And then you can start patching, and then that should be done within a second or so. I'm not going to do that because I already did do that. So uh, that is how you should um, set your correct Skyrim version. Then we need to go to the Skyrim script extender page. And instead of downloading the latest one, we're going to need a specific version also for Skyrim script extender. In this case, we need version 2.1.5. So you can press Ctrl F to search and just copy the version and download this one here. So download this version also in your manual uh, fo folder and then um, yeah we can continue with that so yeah we can do uh, now the installation of Skyrim script extender so once we did set the Skyrim special edition version open up your Skyrim script extender version so version 2.1.5 
And yeah, um, a lot of people would say you need to import the data for your mod organizer, blah, blah, blah. I don't really care that much about it. Just select all the files here and drag and drop it into your Skyrim Special Edition main game folder. I'm not going to do that since I already have it here, but that's just simple as that. Drag and drop all the files in your Skyrim Special Edition main game folder. So don't confuse it with a Wabajack folder. Your Skyrim Special Edition game folder is your Steam library, Steam apps, comments, Skyrim Special Edition. All right, that's the hardest part I would say. Um, then we want to install the EMB binary files. So we, the good thing with this model is we can use the latest version of the EMB uh, and all the wonderful effects all the EMB updates have, which is very important and that actually works. So what you want to do is open the EMB binaries, download the latest version, doesn't matter what, what's standing here. In this case, it's four, what is it, eight, eight? I'm sitting a little bit far away from my monitor. So download that file and download and then open up the EMB binary files. Then you want to open up the wrapper version folder and you only want to drag and drop these two files, D3, D, uh, 11.dll and D3, D compiler underscore 46 E.dll and just drag and drop them in your Skyrim special edition main game folder. And again, I already have done that, so I'm not going to do that. Then we can close that and then we only have a couple of steps remaining. Um, then we want to download the Pred Calibre approved EMB cocktail. So there's a combination of EMB files which work the best with my mod page. Um, I would strongly suggest you pick this over any other EMB, to be honest. So it also is included in my files and it is this one. So download this file. And once you've done that, also here, open it up and drag and drop all these files in your Skyrim Special Edition main game folder. All right, once you've done that, um, we have installed almost all the manual files. There are just a, what is it, two? Uh, I think two files are left, and that's this one. So you want to uh, click on this file, the engine fixes file. You want to click on files. <clears throat> and you want to have this one, part two engine fixes. This is what you want to download and now place manually also in your Skyrim Special Edition main game folder. So let's see, here it is. So let's go to our mods folder. And this is the file we just did, oh, did download. So open it up and drag and drop all these files in your Skyrim Special Edition. Yes, main game folder. Brilliant. All right, then the last thing we need to download is this, the Skyrim 2021 patch. So it links to a, um, a Google Drive because I'm not allowed to host it on my Nexus uh, page. And here is a file mirror if you, yeah, if this is, uh, if this is being overloaded with traffic. So download this file as well, it's quite large. Let's see, where is it? The, um, bup, bup, bup. this one, yeah. Okay, so we need to actually install this with Mod Organizer. So let's meet our tool, which we're going to use now to have, um, yeah, to check what we have installed. So open up the shortcut you did create to it. And what you want to see now here, if you click down on the drop down menu, is this SKSE. This is Skyrim Script Extender and only start the game from now on via Skyrim Script Extender. So what you can do is here, click on Create Shortcut, create a shortcut to your desktop. Here it is, SKSE, and rename it something like Skyrim Special uh, or Skyrim SE Game. So from now on, only use this shortcut to launch Skyrim Special Edition. Don't use this one, as a matter of fact, just delete it. Okay, what I suggest also now is just one, just for one uh, one time, click the launcher and run it to configure your Skyrim Special Edition. You click on options and just select ultra, you know, select your resolution and also do make sure you check advanced, set everything to max here as well. And then, you know, set it and you can exit it. And here also, by the way, a lot of you uh, have issues with windowed mode, like it is, um, yeah, it's, it's a, like an endless windowed mode, which you can't alt enter. 
Here, this is probably enabled. So you want to check in here if you have that issue. All right, and then just set it back to SKSE. All right, what we want to do now is we want to add that file. So I would say let's, um, what's the easiest way to do this? Let's have it both open. So we want to download the patch, uh, sorry, we want to add the patch that we did download. To do that is click on here, add mod from file, or in this case, install a new mod from archive. And we want to add the patch file, this one. All right, then you see it here. You can click on manual and then you press okay. Uh, I already did install it. So yeah, for me, it doesn't uh, uh, really do it. Um, but the file will probably be here at the bottom. What you want to do is drag and drop that file. So the patch file and let's see, I do have it. Where do I have it? Patch, patch, patch. Um, we need to, we need to drag and drop it to do a specific place. Okay. So, um, where is mine? Really recling outpost. That's priority three, two, three, five. So the file you have the, um, where is it? Yeah, either patch, it's at the bottom for you now. So all the way over here, once you did add this uh, patch manually. So we need to drag and drop it between two files. The, uh, what is it? The uh, Redis Weaklings Outpost and JS Lockpicking. So in order to determine where those files are, here you can see priority, so a number of lists. If you click here on filter and we type in Reekling, you will see here the Rally's Reekling Outpost mod, which is on priority 235. So scroll all the way down again, and then just click and hold the file and sc scroll all the way up to 235, which is here. And drag and drop it here in between. Also then just activate the mod and it will uh, enable a lot of uh, ESP files here in the file tree. All right, and let's see what we need to do now. We now need to go to the sort tab and <clears throat> you want to click here. So on sort, this is not perfect anymore, but for our case, it works fine. Click on sort and you want to do the same um, sorting with the plugins. So let's see in the instructions what we need to do. In the plugin section, then drag and drop the full Fanger and Origins of Forest ESP plugins almost at the end of the load order, just above alternate start. So also here you can search for these plugins and I already did correct them, but an example, if we want to have, um, let's see, uh, Folk Fanger, we can search where Folk Fanger is. It is at <coughs> my priority 189, but for you check where it is because it's probably somewhere in the middle. Um, and then you want to drag and drop Folkfanger and Origin of Forest, both plugins in this order. So you want to have uh, Origins of Forest just uh, on top of alternate start, live another life. And above there, you want to have Folkfanger. So make sure you drag and drop these plugins so that they are in this order. It's the same I did describe here. All right, that's, I know it sounds a little bit confusing, but I think you guys get the idea. Here you can search for the mods to find the priority list. So the number where it is, same here left for the installed mods and right for the plugins. So just follow it like I have said it here and then it should be fine. Then we were almost there. You only want to reboot your computer to clear uh, all temporary files and your RAM. And then uh, make sure to do that right now, actually. And I'll see you guys in a little bit. All right, once you did restart your PC, go back to your mod organizer. Then make sure you still have SKC selected. And um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Let's see what we need to do. <clears throat> so from now on, only start, like I said, Skyrim Special Edition with SKC. So either with the shortcut you did create on your desktop or directly from here. Uh, good practice is now to disable Steam Overlay. And um, let's see, here is an explanation how you need to do that. So yeah, you know, in Steam do that. And uh, another thing you want to do is go to your uh, game. Let's see, select properties. Uh, oh, here, by the way, in general, you can disable the Steam Overlay while in game. 
And if you click on updates, uh, make sure you select only updates this game when I launch it. The thing is, it will now never be updated anymore because we're going to start Skyrim Special Edition with Skyrim Script Extender. And Steam doesn't recognize Skyrim Script Extender as an official game start with Skyrim Special Edition executable. And what that means is it will now never update the game anymore. And that is what we want because else, like I said, you have to uh, downgrade Skyrim Special Edition again. But theoretically, from now on, you should uh, and definitely be able to play Skyrim Special Edition without having to worry about these weird Bethesda upgrades. So, once you've done that, that's pretty much it for now. We're going to jump into the game um, and I'm going to show you what will happen if you start a new game. And after that, I'm going to explain to you how to easily install your own mods on top of this mod list. So let's start the game. Quick note, it can take a while before you're able to finally see something because the EMB files and all the files need to initialize first. And yeah, it, it can take like a minute or something. So if you see a black screen for about a minute, don't panic, just wait it out until you hear the menu music and then I'll see you guys in game. All right, so welcome in game. Um, you should see a pretty clean menu here now. And let me show you what happens if you start a new game now. So click new, let's start. So we have here random alternate start. And what that means is we can either just select the vanilla start in the Helgen sequence, but a lot of you just want to start randomly somewhere in Skyrim. And that's what we can do now. Also here you have this very advanced race menu to, you know, um, yeah, get access to a lot of options when it comes to character creation. You have uh, an example, um, just your regular, um, uh, what is it, a race menu. But also, yeah, you have these, oh, wait a minute, I did something wrong, presets. I don't know, um, but what I really want to show you is uh, if you go to hair, an example, here you have 900 house hairstyles and most of them are from KS Herodos. As you can see here, this is very high quality hair and you have you know, almost thousand styles, including some of the vanilla styles, of course. But as you can see, this hair looks really, really a lot better than the vanilla hair. So very high quality, very high textures. And you know, you can just select also uh, the hair color etc etc with that so play with it uh, if you like and there are many 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 options which you can use and um, yeah let's continue so I'm just going to name this test character tutorial and now we can start uh, with yeah selecting a random uh, place to start approach my child and choose where your new life shall begin I Love camping the woods in the woods. Can be so peaceful this time of year. Good hunting. And also what you can see now here in the upper left corner, you can see all these MCM menus being registered. So all the mods are now being registered, etc. etc. So this mod random start alternate life, you can just randomly start somewhere in Skyrim. It's really easy. You don't have to wait the entire freaking Highland card sequence. But if you like, you can do that here as well. Then let's activate our bed and we should be able to wake up in a forest, I think. And it's also good for us to test a couple of things. All right, here we are. Yeah, survival mode. This is something from Skyrim Anniversary Edition. This is not one of our mods. So yeah, that's pretty much up to you. For now, I'm going to disable it. And as you can see already, everything looks really, really cool. Oh, hi, little dragon. I hope you don't hope you're going to attack us. But anyway, as you can see, vegetation, um, leaves, sunlight, mountains, everything looks really wonderful. Frame rate really looks really, really uh, stable. And that means everything is pretty much fine. So there are a couple of console commands I use to test things. First one is TMM1 to have all map markers shown. So it's easier for us to uh, fast travel. Uh, TGM for God mode and... Um, Let's see, T detection, T detect for uh, to prevent creatures are going to attack us so we can, uh, yeah, you know, in safety, uh, just uh, run around and explore everything. What you can see here, if especially if I stand still, you can see the head wobbling a little bit. It's from a mod called, uh, let's see, let's go to mod configuration MCM. 
Um, where is it? A combat gameplay overall. And what I love about this, if you go here to settings and um, the increase the camera noise to the maximum, because I think it's really immersive. Let me show you. As you can see here, it looks really realistic to have these kind of uh, head movements um, for the immersion in the game. By the way, uh, it also alters combat a little bit with movement. So, an example, if I want to, uh, can I do it like this? No. Yeah, it will uh, have these kind of rolls. If you don't like this mod and you don't care about the head bubbling, you can relatively simple disable it in the mod organizer tool. But I'm going to show you that later. For now on, everything seems to look fine. We can, uh, since we are pretty close go to um, an example Riverwoods should be here to check out the NPCs a little bit to make sure there are no black faces or things like that but my mob jack mod list should be designed that everything is perfectly fine in order so if we go to um, also here look how great the lot distant landscape looks and with set game hour we can an example set time to 12 to have uh, yeah, afternoon uh, timing. And here you can see how great the lot and all looks. So let's go to the River Trader. And then if we can uh, check what's her name again. Camilla, yeah. As you can see here, she has no black gaps in her face, no um, face box. So that means everything is installed correctly. And that's pretty much it. So you can now explore the wonderful world of Skyrim. All right, so that's pretty much it for the tutorial. Um, thanks for watching. I'm going to continue in this video with explaining how you can install um, your own custom mods or yeah, mods you see on Nexus, on the Nexus mod page and how to categorize things a little bit better. All right, with that, the uh, tutorial is pretty much done, but like I, uh, like I promised, I'm going to explain how to easily control uh, any custom mods that you would like to install on top of my mod list because you can actually do that also i did explain if you do not like the combat gameplay overall mods so the ones with the yeah uh, combat gameplay overall and the um the head bobbing you can just simply uncheck this box and then that mod has been disabled so that's how easy it can be all right, so how to have a good overview of what has been installed by my mod list and things you would like to install in the future. The easiest way to do that is by creating two spacers. So right click here a little bit uh, where you have an empty space and no mods and then create a separator. So let's call the first one mods uh, from the tutorial list, something like that. And the other one, um, let's create a new one, a separator mods after the tutorial. And if you right click on them, you can uh, select color. So let's pick a blue color, a green color maybe for this one. That's maybe easier. So what you want to do is drag and drop this separator that we did create mods from the tutorial list. And let's scroll it all the way up once uh, while we are drag and dropping it and uh, place it after all the creation club stuff As a matter of fact it might actually work let me check if we put it all the way at the top yep that actually works so what you want to do is put it all the way at the top and then you can collapse everything and then you can see here everything in mods from the tutorial list okay and now we will have this also mods after the tutorial so an example, you are browsing um, your next uh, Skyrim Special Edition and you see a really cool sword, an example this one, Sword of the Ancient Tongues. So you would like to add this sword, but you're not sure if it's compatible or where to put it in a mod list. A general rule is of mods, especially items and gameplay stuff, just add it as last in the, this specific load order and it should normally be fine. Only exceptions are uh, might be uh, models, uh, player models and uh, animations. You might want to check a little bit where you have to put them. But all other stuff like weapons, armors, gameplay mods, you can just download it like the way we're going to do it now. So an example, we want this sword. An example, yeah, I just want this uh, cool looking sword of ancient tongues. I open the files and then select mod manager download. 
and then it will download via your mod organizer. So the stuff we did download and install via Wabajack. Okay, in mod organizer, then go to downloads and scroll all the way down. As you can see here, this now has downloaded the Sword of Ancient Tongues. Just right click on that mod, click install. All right, this has a uh, menu, it seems. I go for loose files. Um, yeah, whatever. This is just for, uh, for showcase purposes. And then you can activate the mod. And if you go to the plugins, it will probably add a plugin later. I don't think we can now. We cannot, unfortunately, uh, create separators for the plugins. But as you can see, here now all your new mods are being placed under mods after the tutorial. So that's how simple it is. You know, if you are unsure is something compatible or not, download that mod. Uh, you know, if you have these separators, you can download and install all these mods after the tutorial. Like I said, the only uh, exception is an example if you would download a body mod like CBBE body mod. In that case, let's see, uh, you want to install it um, before all the other body and uh, sorry, all the other things like eyes, hair and uh, NPCs will start. And that would be right here before uh, we go. So if you have a UMP body for your player or a CBBE body for your player, uh, you want to install it here. So right under uh, or right above Wico. But like I said, all the other stuff relatively safe to install after the um, after all my tutorial mod list with just the ease of two simple separators. If you want to really do it more advanced in my own mod list, you can do that. As you can see, I pretty much started with uh, patches um, and more. Yeah, uh, what is it? Uh, all kinds of um, mods and categories, you know, eventually go to landscape stuff, to player uh, and NPC stuff, and to very more specific texture stuff. So if you would like to use separators in that, you can do that as well. But the easiest way is to create a separator mods from the tutorial list, drag it all the way at the top, and then create one mods after the tutorial. And then here you can place all your mods directly under it. If something bugs or is not working properly, you can just simply uncheck it. And that's it. Then the mod will not be loaded anymore with Skyrim Special Edition. So I hope with this little addition, you guys, uh, I hope to have answered the many questions of can I use mod X with your mod list? So the answer is 99% of the time, yes. Just add it here after the uh, tutorial list itself. With that, that was the end of this video. Um, one little announcement, next year I will have the 2024 edition. That will be actually my 10 year anniversary tutorial video. So that's pretty cool. I did start in 2014 with my first tutorial video. So next year will be my actually 10 year anniversary tutorial video. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments or other things, questions, let me know that either on the Nexus mod page in the comments or Discord or in the comment section of the YouTube video. Thanks for watching and hope to see you at one of my next videos. So take care and bye bye.